Aha. Uh-huh. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to W A D E Wade Radio, caller number twelve, you're on the air. <laughs> how are you? Hello everybody. Hi, how are you? How are you um, all? <laughs> good. How are you doing on this leap year night? I mean not leap year. Daylight savings night. Leap forward. I'm doing okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember because we've talked a little bit about things, and I think say that you had a Catholic background. No. 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 Okay. Did Did you have any 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 upbringing or? Uh, I think you were going to a uh, a church. I won't say which church. I remember you mentioned in the church that you go to. Um, so I don't know. Do they like, have you ever, like, do you know the gospel? Like, have you ever heard the gospel of our salvation clearly? Yes. Okay. So can you share with me what you think and what you believe the gospel to be? What is the gospel? Um, it's good news. Okay. And what is that good news and the gospel of our salvation? God sent to his son to die for us, for our sins, so we can be saved. Did you say that so that Jesus died for our sins so that we can be saved? Yes. Okay. That's part of the gospel. Um, the, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you and which you've received and wherein ye stand, by which also you're saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. And he says, um, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also preached, and here's the gospel in summary, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he's buried and that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. That's the content of the gospel of our salvation that saves today, that, that when we believe that gospel, then the moment we believe the gospel and we put our faith and trust in Christ alone, we're saved, we're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ and sealed unto the day of redemption. So the gospel is how that Christ, and it has to be the right Jesus, okay? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, came and lived a sinless life. He kept the law perfectly as a Jew, and he went to the cross, and he shed his precious blood on that cross that is the most precious in in valuable you can't put a price tag on the substance that's ever existed on this planet and he shed his blood for you and paid the that that none of us can pay and he died his heart stopped beating he died he went into the the tomb and was buried in a borrowed tomb for three days and it was borrowed because he only needed it for a little while, three days to be back. And he was resurrected on the third day, declared to be the son of God. Paul says that he was raised for our justification. There are two main things that we need for salvation. One is we need forgiveness of sin. 
And the second is we need to be made righteous in the sight of God. He says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he hath made him, God hath made him Christ, for he hath made him to be sin for us. He who knew no sin, that, that we might be made the righteousness of God. In so this is what I call the great exchange. The theological term would be imputation. But think of it this way, when, it, when a person realizes that they are a lost and have truly been saved, you have a bank account, Jesus has a bank account. Your bank account is full of sin and sin leads to death and must be, you know, washed by the precious blood of Jesus. He has a bank account that has the righteousness of God. The moment that you get to the place where you admit that you're a lost sinner in need of a savior, the moment you put you that that that, that you throw up that white flag of surrender and make the decision that you are going to put all of your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for you by shedding his blood on the cross, dying, being buried, and resurrected on the third day. The moment you believe that, your account of sin is charged to him. You're forgiven of all sin, past, present, and future. And that righteousness of God in Christ is then put to your account. So when we get saved, and believe that gospel, it's not our righteousness at all because there's no amount of good that we can do. There's no amount of trying to keep rules and regulations or laws given to Israel or any of those things. There's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation, but we need to be justified. We need, need to be made righteous before God. And the only righteousness that will satisfy a holy God is the righteousness of God in Christ. It's his righteousness and not ours. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so that means if you sin again, you're still forgiven. Every sin. Paul said that we're forgiven of all trespasses. He says in Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. We're not saved by not sinning. And that's the misconception that a lot of people have because there's a lot of false teachers out there that'll say, you know, well, just believe in Jesus or whatever. And then you've got to live a holy life. You have to constantly repent of sin. Sin is never good. Like, I'm not, there's no, what, nowhere in scripture will sin be condoned as a thing that we should do. However, us, us cleaning up our lives, turning over a new leaf, not sinning, it, that's not going to happen because every single one of us at, at our, if you take the very best day of our lives and we still sin against God. So we're not saved by not sinning. We're saved by having our for, our sins forgiven. That's the problem that we have that we can't resolve is that we are sinners. So it's not about us saying, okay, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to believe in Jesus or whatever. And I'm going to try to live a certain life of holiness and, and give up, you know, everything overnight and just like start living a sinless life and keep doing that every day until the day that I take my last breath. And if I make it like 60% of the way or 70 or if I'm really, you know, good 80% of the way and fall short, then the death, burial and resurrection of Christ makes up the the other 20% or 30% like supplemental insurance or something. That's not salvation. It's all Christ. It's all Jesus. 
so the 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 righteousness that's needed is not dependent on our righteousness it's it's depending on the righteousness and trusting in the righteousness of Jesus Christ Paul says that uh, he says for when we were enemies um, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and he talks about being reconciled in 2 Corinthians 5 and he says that to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself at the cross that's when he reconciled the world to himself and we need to make we are we are enemies of God before we, and we have to make peace with God and be reconciled to God. Reconciliation is a two party thing. God's already reconciled the world to himself through the death of Christ. But Paul says, be ye reconciled to God, which means that if you've got two people that are in, reconciled to be friends and make peace making peace with God he says in Romans 5 1 therefore being justified by have peace with God and that's man's problem is they don't they have not been made they haven't made peace with God and have not been reconciled to God and so the admonition from Paul is based on the fact that he has already done his part to reconcile with you than what is required for you to recon be reconciled to God. And that, the, that he makes it so crystal clear that we are saved by grace alone, not by the law, not by works. Grace is an unmerited favor. It is God giving us a gift that we do not deserve, but we have to receive that gift. And he shows mercy to all. With mercy is him holding from us what we do deserve. Which every single one of us deserves to be separated from him. So when we understand the gospel, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, he says in whom he says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted Christ. That's the difference between believing in Christ and believing on Christ, but trusting him, putting their faith in him alone. He says that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel salvation which is what we just went over in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that holy spirit of promise you hear the gospel the word of truth the gospel of our salvation which you've heard then when you believe that gospel then you are sealed with the holy spirit of promise and then two chapters, three chapters later, he says, you're sealed until the day of redemption. That's when he comes back for the body of Christ at the rapture of the church. You're sealed and you're in the body of Christ and you can't be taken out of the body of Christ. Once you're baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, the moment you believe that gospel, you trust in Christ. Has there ever been a time that you put your faith and trust in him and believe that gospel and were saved or is the Lord, I hear, I hear the emotion and do you believe the gospel that I just shared with you? Do you believe that he did that for you and that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, that he is the Son of God in God in flesh? I do. Do you mind if I pray with you? No, please. So 
I'm going to say a prayer. And then I want to help help lead you to prayer. And, and I, I always want to make this very important. You know, it, it's not the words that you're saying. It's what's in your heart. The moment you believe the gospel before the word even comes out of your mouth, and you put your faith and trust in Christ, you're saved. But if what's going on in your heart right now is you're making, is that you, is that right now you're realizing and understanding the clear gospel of our salvation, Christ, then I want to help lead you in prayer. Okay. <clears throat> Father, thank you so much for Ellie and for her having the courage to get up here and talk to me about this. I know that that we've touched on it and have just kind of been hit or miss on being able to finally talk, but I'm so, so grateful that you've worked in her heart, Lord, and, and given her the desire to know you and to settle her salvation by believing the grace of God to be saved and resurrection of your son I'm just so thankful that she was on on here and wanted to come up and talk to me about it and there's nothing more important never a decision that we make in our entire lives is more important than settling our salvation and reconciling with you so Ellie I want to lead you in a, in a prayer and I want you to th Think about this and only only repeat what you really mean it, okay? Okay. okay. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. And I know that because of my sin. I don't know because of my sins. I deserve to spend eternity separated from you. I deserve to spend the eternity separate from you. But I believe that you sent your son, the Lord Jesus. But I believe that you sent your son, the Lord the Jesus. To shed his precious blood for my sin. To shed his precious blood my sins and to die for me and be buried to die for me and be buried and was resurrected on the third day and was resurrected on the third day and Lord I am trusting only in the righteousness of Jesus Salvation. I'm trust only in the rightness of Jesus for salvation. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. And thank you for giving me your Holy thank Spirit you. promise. Thank you for giving me a Holy Spirit promise. Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. I feel I feel like I feel like I just washed my soul. Feel clean? Yes. Do you feel like a burden's been lifted off of your shoulders? Yes. I do. Sorry. I am I mean, I can't even I can't even put it into words, Ellie, that like how thrilled I am and I'm sure you can see in the comments I'm not the only one that is rejoicing right now. What, what happened tonight 
for you impacts all of eternity. I mean, every single person in here that is a member of the body of Christ, that you're now a member of as well, is going to rejoice with you about what you've done tonight by trusting in the gospel for eternity. And now you have the Holy Spirit of God living inside of you that's going to, you have the presence of God himself that's taking, take, has taken up residency inside you. Paul talks about that our body's the temple of the Holy Spirit when we believe the gospel and he will never leave you. You're sealed in the day of salvation, okay? You're going to sin just like the rest of us. We still sin, and the reason why is not because it's costing us salvation, doing everything that Jesus did for us on the cross and everything. It's because we still have this flesh, this body of sin that has the law of sin and death in it still. But Jesus didn't save your body. He saved your soul and spirit, and he's going to give you a new body when he returns body of Christ at the rapture and so don't be discouraged if you if you're gonna you're going to sh struggle with sin and as, as long as we're calling this carcass you're still going to have to deal with sin and everything but now you've got God's spirit inside you and he will help you and strengthen you if you spend time trusting in him on a daily basis not for salvation that's done <laughs> you know, but just walk, learning to walk with him every day until you get to see Jesus face to face and the most important thing that you can do is spend time with him every day in his word and in prayer uh, I mean I will help you with anything for your walk, I can help you with, you know, where, where to really start off maybe in your Bible studying. Um, do you do you already have a Bible? I do. Okay. Um, and I'll talk to you about all that, you know, and, and kind of point you to where, um, I, well, I'll tell you for, for right now, um, do you have uh, do you have a King James Bible? Um, I do, I do. You do? Yes. Okay. What I what I'm what I'm asking you to do and admonishing you to do is whether it's after we get done talking here or tomorrow or whenever, is get out your King James Bible and start in the book of Romans. Covers some of the verses I was quoting tonight are in Romans, and in Romans, he goes through a progression where he starts off explaining the sinfulness of man, sinfulness and guilt of the world. In the first couple chapters, it starts transitioning in to where, when you get into chapter three, it starts talking about that justification that I was talking about, where you're made right in the sight of God and receive His righteousness by faith. And it continues on through the chapters three, four, and five. And as you get into chapters six, seven, and the beginning of eight, in that area, it talks about sanctification, which is God's spirit working in us on a on a on a ongoing basis. And and Paul talks about struggling, like I want to do right, but I don't because I got this flesh. And he gives a lot of like practical stuff to understand the Christian life in a sanctification and then chapter 8 gets to glorification which is when we get our new bodies and everything um, and then he goes on and by the time you get to chapter 12 the rest of, rest of Romans is kind of about our reasonable service and our, our daily walk um, but start with Romans and then just keep going 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians and read you know, through those passages or whatever. Okay. But I'm, I'm, 
I won't be able to sleep tonight now. I mean, <laughs> I have really, I mean, I've really been wanting to talk to you. I mean, I'm, I'm very I'm, glad. Are you glad that you decided to hop in tonight? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. For the... oh, thank you. And that, that many of the people, a lot of them that I know, are going to be um, praying for you. Many of them probably already prayed for you even tonight <laughs> while we were talking. And um, and y'all, please follow her to her. Uh, she, you know, you've been on. You come in every now and then on my lives and everything, and and I think you stayed through you and everything. Um, but I, I, you know, I'd love for you to keep you know, coming back and grow, helping grow in the Lord and learning God's word. And I can, I can recommend, you know, Bible teachers and, and pastors that teach, you know, sound. that'll help get you really grounded because that's, what's important is getting grounded in the truth of God's word. Because if, if, if you, if you don't get grounded in God's word, then Paul talks about, like being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, Ephesians <laughs> four, and that's what happens. You'll see it. You'll see it on social media. Hang out, hang out with Christian TikTok for a while, and just scroll through. And people are just tossed, and they change what they believe every two weeks, and they they have no uh-huh. idea what the scripture is actually saying, and they just they just throw out false doctrine and false teaching. The only way to really combat that, you can you know, like I, if you run something past like me for example like get help and stuff ultimately it's going to be your responsibility to get grounded in god's word so that way when something comes along and it's not jiving with the bible and it goes against scripture you'll you'll pick up on that and the holy spirit will be like "Uh uh-uh that's not what i say in my word you know um and so it's it's very very important because a lot i've known so many people over the year that, that have gotten saved and then maybe they get caught up with the wrong crowd or false teachers or, or they don't start off right and spending time every day with the Lord and his word and prayer. So that's, I don't know. I, like I said, the, the most important thing is what happened tonight, getting saved and becoming a member of the body of Christ sealed by the Holy Spirit, but I want to help you and be an encouragement to you in your walk. Thank you. I I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for today. Do you have anything else that that you want to share before you? Um, No, I just want to thank you very much, right? I don't know. If, I don't know if De Nada is Portuguese for you. Know, but, how do you say you're you're very welcome in Portuguese? Um, well, it's it's very similar to Spanish. Um, you're very welcome. Okay. You just you just say De Nada. Okay, De Nada. Well, instead of De Nada, it's Che Nada. G. G Nada. Okay. G Nada. I might have to start get the gift of tongues and start speaking Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. I'm so happy for you. Like beyond stoked. You have no idea. Um, <laughs> But I hope that you have an awesome night. If you want to continue to hang out, that's great. But I'm I'm going to follow up with you and it, or you follow up with me, like here in the next couple of days, and I will see how you're doing. Okay. And but but get in Romans, get your King James Bible, and get into Romans and start reading. And uh, that would be great. So, ba boom, boom, boom. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Then okay. I right, appreciate well, have- you all. Well, I love you. I hope that you have a, an awesome night, okay? Thank you. I love right. you too. Bye-bye. Grace and peace.
<laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what that's what it's all about, folks. I, I mean if 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 you don't get excited watching people get saved or whatever, then you know, I can't help you. Kind of like my grandpa used to say, if I don't light your fire, your wood's wet. You know, I mean, it's like, amen on that. It's just awesome. Amen, Brian. Amen, Shane. Um, <clears throat> Yes, definitely rejoice. Amen, Brenda. <laughs> Dad. Um, if anybody wants to hop in, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming Ellie's still here. If you have any words of encouragement for her, or just want to say something, please. Uh, send a guest request and hop in and even if it's just for for a couple minutes but that's just beyond all. well praise the lord that was awesome amen doug me and Miriam was saying hey take our hand we'll go up there with you <laughs> and uh that's why i was just joining i just wanted to tell her that um, you have a brand new identity in Christ, and that is your identity. Hang on to that. You're going to have a real rough week of being attacked by the devil. Uh, but just uh, live Don't daily. <laughs> no, but it's so true. <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. No, but but he's he's right though. Like you know, people that think. Oh, well, now I'm Christian. Everything's going to be just, you know, roses and and butterflies and unicorns and all that kind of stuff, whatever. Um, and it's it's not going to be. I mean, there's going to be difficulties and challenges, and you know, the devil. Sometimes people give the devil way too much credit and everything. Um, that's not to you, Doug. By the way, they give the devil way too much credit as far as you know, blaming everything on the devil. Um, you know, oh, it was a spirit of hangnails that ruined my day, that kind of thing. Um, but you will, especially if you are walking closely with the Lord, that's when the spiritual warfare is going to really take place. But as a new believer, the last thing he wants you to do is get to that point and get grounded in God's word. Like we're talking about, and he's, you know, may do things to try to trip you up on it. And then you still have your flesh and the world. And, you know, so there are a lot of things that you'll learn to, to be able to, to deal with and overcome, but, but you're already, you've already won. We've won. I mean, once you're in Christ, like you're on the winning side. Yes. You're on the winning side. We've read the back of the book. Jesus wins, and those of us that are in him partake of that and become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So, I was just excited that that's what this app should be for right there, every day. So good, Wade. Amen, praise the Lord. Mikey, do you want to share something with her? I, I'm just I'm just over the moon. I mean, I, I was, you know... <laughs> It's funny because we all got to live our normal lives outside of TikTok. But while I was hanging out with my family, I was like, man, I really want to go on TikTok and see Wade's live. And I popped in just right at the right time. And it's like, oh, man, this is this is what it's all about. It's like you see all the garbage on TikTok and the, the baloney and, and whatever. And to see something like that, every I've, it's probably the fourth or fifth time I've seen it. And um Every time I see it, it's like seeing it for the first time. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes. I just, it's, 
yeah, I really don't know what else to say other than that. I'm just really moved. It was beautiful. You never get over it, right? I mean, no, because I, you, you know, you relate, you relate to the brokenness. I mean, you relate to that moment when you surrendered, and and you you just remember that feeling of feeling that weight lift, and and you just uh, it's having that empathy that and and, f- and remembering that feeling. And uh, I know what it did for me and, and everyone else knows what it did for them. And to, to see that, um, what can I say? I mean, heaven rejoices, we rejoice, and, and it's just, uh, it's amazing. I love what after I when she feel clean. So how, what is she, how did she word it? Like that she just been, feel like I just got washed or something. Um, she got it. You know what I mean? Like, it, we don't go, we don't base things on feelings. No, by the way. Um, we, you know, it's about the object of our faith, not how much faith we have, but the object of our faith. And it's Christ and his word and taking God at his word. And that's, that's where our faith is grown. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God and everything. Um, but that being said, um, when you when you have the Spirit of God come into you, I, I mean, I just I don't know. Like I, I, I'm not. I never base doctrine on experiences, and those of you that know me know that that's true. Um, so when I'm like telling my testimony, I'm careful, like. Not to make it sound like, okay, and this is the way it's going to be for everybody. But I know when I got saved when I was 12 years old, I remember how I felt that night. And I remember the next morning walking to school and I felt like I was walking on clouds. Like I knew something happened and I knew that God's spirit had come to live inside of me. And I felt that same cleanness that all my sins were washed away. I had you know, and I didn't understand imputation and all that stuff at 12 years old. I knew that I got saved and I had no doubt about it. And I have honestly, I have never doubted my salvation one moment since I was 12 years old that night that I got saved. I, there was, you can't convince me that God's spirit didn't come in to live inside of me that, that night. And I've known he's been there ever since, you know, and I mean, it's, it's like, it's different for everybody and stuff, but, um, that way, that was real. Everybody, if you're on this live right now that you, I mean that it, it was real and that's so exciting because it just confirms what happened. You, you went right back to 12, right? I went right back to 21. <laughs> um, it's just so awesome. So excited, and that was that's why I was typing. I don't know if you ever read mine, but I always if this doesn't fire you up, your wood's wet. There's something really wrong with you. I mean, <laughs> that was definitely real, and that was the Holy Spirit. Sorry, Mike. Did you have something else? I I, I don't know if I, I may have cut you off. No, no that that was kind of it. I mean, and for me, it was. I mean, I just came came to Christ in 2020. So it's still pretty fresh for me. And, um, you know, I, I, I know that what you were talking about when you were 12 years old, how you felt, it's like, for me, when I, when I got saved, everything was shut down. Like we were all, everybody was locked in their homes and nothing was open. And it was like, there was no church to go to. And all I had was a Bible and YouTube. (laughs) And I just, I just immediately the next day was like, or the, even that day and the next day I was just couldn't get enough of my Bible, couldn't get enough of sermons. And it's just been that way ever since. I mean, my entire source of entertainment was like, I, I hate to say entertainment, but it's like 99%, you know, has to do with Jesus and either reading about Jesus or talking about Jesus or watching a sermon about Jesus. And it's like, I, it's, 
when that when that happens to you and you know that the holy spirit is inside you the peace and the comfort no matter what you're going through the peace and the comfort that you have just knowing that is beyond measure i mean it's you can't man it just it just makes me it just makes me sad for the people that are blinded it's like you know people think that being a christian you're under some yoke of you know some yoke of bondage of you know being a goody two shoes or whatever and it's 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 uh man it's it's not that it's it's not about following a bunch of rules and all that yes we should strive to be as holy as we can be uh, you know and but at the same time it's knowing that in our failures um no matter what we are we are eternally saved eternally secure and uh you know, Jesus is faithful and he's constantly working in us and will not stop working in us. And, um, that, uh, you know, we're just going to continue to, uh, live this wonderful life in him. And it's, what can I say? It's, it's the best life ever. Amen, Mike. Nothing like, nothing like. by the way, and then I'm, I'm going to hear from Miriam. Um, Amen, Mom. Uh, if you saw the comment on there, look, you don't have to have been in the guest box. If, 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 if you were watching and listening and and the Holy Spirit of God was convicting your heart that you were lost, um, you can... Do the very same thing and believe on Christ and put your faith and trust in the gospel and be saved tonight too. Um, that's something that you can get along with God. And if and if there's somebody here that that was listening and that light bulb turned on and and you believe that that you got saved tonight and trusted Christ, you know please let me know you don't have to I mean, if you want to comment on here you can or at least message me or something and i'll help you in any way that i can or anything but that's the gospel of our salvation but that's the message that we're supposed to be getting out to, to the anybody that's lost you know i mean it it still works it still saves souls and people need to hear that message and there's just so much confusion out there you can't if 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 i got off of this live right now and you turned on a stopwatch and said all right go find somebody that's posted a TikTok that gives the gospel clearly and that it is the true gospel the grace of god i don't know how long it would take me to be honest with you and my whole algorithm's christian TikTok. i could scroll and scroll and scroll and you'd have all kinds of people just confusing people about the gospel and 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 you know like like i say if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost for the god of this world satan hath blinded the minds of them that believe not you know these people that preach a false gospel that is satanic to hide the gospel the grace of god from unbelievers um but we just gotta do everything we can to keep keep preaching the gospel um amen Shane. praise the lord okay miriam 